Welcome to running on reddit. Like and subscribe, or you'll be running on fumes. I work in a gas station that's owned by a grocery store in the Midwest. For whatever reason, we've been having problems with our distributor and we haven't been getting nearly enough of the cigarettes we sell the most of. Tonight we are out of Newport 100s, Newport Shorts, and Newport Light 100s. We sell tons of these so naturally people are pissed. We also have a deal going on right now that you save $1.50 if you buy two packs, but all we have are the Newport Light Shorts. In walks this lady with her daughter. L. Can I have two packs of Newport Light 100s? Me. I'm sorry but we don't have any. We've been having problems with the distributor so all we have are the light shorts. L. O. Well does the unaffiliated gas station across the street have the $1.50 off 2 deal? 2. Me. Dumbfounded that she would think I would know our competitors deals. I don't know what their deals are as we aren't affiliated with them. L. Okay well I'll go across the street then. I just couldn't believe that she thought I would know another company's deals. But that wasn't the end of it. She came back in an hour later. L. I've driven all over town. I need two packs of Newport Light 100s. Me. Miss I'm sorry. But like I told you before. We don't have any. Only the shorts. L. Points at shorts they are right there. Me. Those are the shorts. L. That's what I want. Me. You want the shorts? You asked for the 100s. L. Yeah I want the 100s. Me, we don't have them, we only have the shorts. I was so irritated at this point. L, okay yes I'll take those. Me, the shorts? L, yes. Me, okay that'll be $13.80. She looked at the packs and I knew she was going to say something, so I waited to put the payment through. Sure enough. L, M no these are the shorts. M, very irritated and not even caring if she reports me to the managers. Yes that's what you asked for, after I told you that we don't have the 100s. I verified that that's what you wanted, and you said yes you wanted the shorts. L, just looks at me. Me, would you still like to purchase them? L, yes. I put the payment through, and give her the receipt. She then proceeded to sit in our parking lot for an hour. I can only assume she was writing a complaint ML to the store. But if you really won't listen to me, at least listen to what you are saying. Wow, the lady almost seemed clueless. Would you like these cigs? Yes. Obligatory this is a story from back when I worked at, now failed, small electronics store in a downtown area. I got this kind of interaction quite often, but this was the most entertaining of them. Me equals me ku equals customer. On this day I was on the sales floor, and a couple of teenage girls walk into the store. Customer, hi, do you guys have any HDMI cables? Me, of course, walks her over to the video cables. How long do you need? Customer, about X feet. Say, are these the only HDMI cables you have? Me, yep, I'm afraid so. The cheapest one was $15 for a 3 foot. Customer, you know, I could get these much cheaper online. Me, you absolutely could. Customer, says nothing. Customer, so can you make it any cheaper for me? Me, I can give you a 10% student discount, but honestly that's the best I can do. Customer, but I've seen HDMI cables X length for $10 online. Me, that's a pretty good price, why didn't you get it online? Customer, because I'd have to wait a couple of days to get it, and I need it now. Me, oh, yeah, I understand I hate it when that happens. Customer, why are these ones so expensive? Me, because that's how we make money. Customer, I guess I'll just have to get it elsewhere. Me, I mean, I thought you needed it now. Glare she grabs the HDMI cable and buys it from me without another word and with the deepest most cutting glare I have ever seen. Too long, didn't read. You pay more because you need it now. Reminds me of gas stations and convenience stores. Way overpriced, but if you need anything it is right there. A doctor came in to get some ice cream. As he checks out, he says damn I left my wallet in the car. I'm assuming has just gonna go get it, but nope. D. Doctor. M. Me. D. Can I just get the ice cream? M. Yeah total is $7. D. I left my wallet in the car. 
M I can grab you a new ice cream when you get your wallet. D I'm not going back to my car, coming back and going back. I'm a doctor, I'm tired, I want ice cream. He was pretty loud and clearly frustrated, but I don't care, you're a doctor, you probs make more money than me, you can afford ice cream, and you can walk 2 minutes. M when you pay for it, I said this in a cocky slash snarky voice. D, I work hard I'm tired I don't want to walk. M, then you don't get the ice cream. He goes to the service desk to try again, and get free ice cream, doesn't get it, and is visually red and angered. This whole scenario was 10 minutes, plenty of time to go get your wallet. I'm not saying doctors are not hard workers or they don't get tired, but you pair like everyone else, you're not special. My word, sounds like the doctor was throwing a temper tantrum and stomping his little baby feet. A little context, I moved to the UK last September for uni, and in November I started working for a clothing retailer in my town. The shop is fairly big, 3 floors, and my role is to support it all, meaning I don't have a specific department, I get moved according to where I'm needed for the day. Now, onto the story. After my probatory period of 2 months, management had decided to keep me in the ladies section. During the day in which this story took place, my job was to take the clothes that customers had left in the fitting rooms. After trying them on, if something didn't fit, you could leave it with the shop assistant at the exit of said fitting rooms and put them back on display. So, since I had been working during the weekdays for my probatory period, I didn't know the weekend staff, nor the tremendous surprise that was waiting for me. Well, my shift starts, I take care of some clothes that had been left in the stockroom, and then I enter the fitting rooms to get the rest. And oh boy, the worst smell I had ever smelled in my life hits my nose. It was like, I don't even know exactly how to describe it. Have you ever opened a full trash bin during the summer? Well, something like that. What made everything even worse is that the area where the unwanted clothes were kept was a small room, usually very hot too, with no ventilation. I tried my best not to gag at the smell, got a few clothes, and then left the fitting rooms as fast as I could. After a few hours of this, I finally gather the courage and go talk to one of the other employees. Me, am I the only one that smells this weird odor? Do you smell it too? She threw a quick glance around and then whispered to me yeah, it's the girl that works in the fitting rooms, she's what causes this smell. I was shocked. I felt miserable just for being sweaty at the end of the day, how could she live like that without feeling horrible? After speaking with a few other colleagues, I found out that the situation was even worse than what I thought. So, usually we have three people in the fitting rooms during the weekend, one stays at the front desk, our smelly girl in this case, and two stay in the small room mentioned above, to get the unwanted clothes, and make sure they are in order and ready to be displayed again. The smell was so bad, they had to contact management first, and HR then, to speak to her about the issue. She refused to listen to them, and kept on with her smelly routine. Apparently, they couldn't do anything about it, so she was free to go on. At this point, management decided to take a small bottle of perfume and put it in the fitting rooms. Sid bottle was to be used whenever she was around. This ordeal went on for a few months until, finally, a few weeks ago she resigned and started working elsewhere. After she left, the fitting rooms kept smelling for a good two weeks, until the only thing left to remind of her was the half-empty bottle of perfume. What shocked me even more, however, is when last week, during a shift, I was chatting with a colleague about her, and she told me that she not only didn't care about her smell, she was proud of it, so much that during her first day of work she had announced yeah, I don't wear deodorant. So yeah, this is my little story, hope you liked it, and thanks for reading. Edit first of all, thank you all, I had no idea so many other people went through something similar, and reading all your comments made me feel a bit better about it. I mean, my nose will probably never recover, but at least it made for an entertaining story. Also, got my hands on a PC, so I decided to format the story a bit. That must have been rough for OP and their co-workers. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a smelly co-worker. So I work at a smaller chain grocery store in a small town. 
I was working my regular shift and all was going pretty well, until this older lady walked up. I was being pretty nice, because I was in a good mood that day, so our exchange went something like this. Me, lady, L. Me, hey, how are you today? L. Pretty bad actually. Me, oh no what's the matter? The lady proceeds to tell me about how the people in the meat department put stickers over the packaging of hot dogs and she could not tell what they were. The sticker was not that big, and no matter where it was placed. I apologized for it though, but she keeps telling me it's ridiculous, and how the meat department could not tell her what they are or something of that sort. So I ask her if she wants to speak to the manager about it, and she says no it's fine. So I continue with the order. I ring up a bunch of Adelia onions, and it was $1.68 per bunch. So she starts throwing a fit. L, these were supposed to be $1.48 per pound, there's no way it's $1.68 per bunch. M, no ma'am, these are a different kind of onion and they are rang by the bunch, points at barcode. L, well I'm not paying that for those. At this point I call the manager up and explained the situation to her because I couldn't go back and check the price on the onions. So she pulls out an ad paper and starts looking on there. She sees that they are not the right kind and walks back to produce with the onions. While this is happening, a line is forming pretty well because I was the only register open. The lady is sighing speaking under her breath at this time, but I just kinda toned it out. L. Hey describe those onions to me. Me. Um. L. The Vildalia onions. Me. Recalling what they look like well they're white and rounder. L. Do not describe them as round. They are bulb shaped and have thicker grass hairs. Have you never seen a Vildalia onion before starts tearing up are you from around here? Me. Yeah. L. Well everyone here should know what they look like. Try googling it or something sometime. That's pathetic. At about this time, my manager comes back with a complete different onion. She says that these were the Vildalia and the ones she picked up were little bulbs and was a white onion. She still gets those ones and I finish up her order. The customer right after her goes, wait what are Vildalia onions? I seriously no idea and I've lived here all my life. I never knew someone could be so attached to onions. I know french fries pretty well, but never something like onions. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on the bell or you'll be running on fumes. See you in the next video.